Hello, everybody. Glad to see you here on our session. My name is Sibylle Lackermeyer. I am part of the product management team for the SAP s Migration Cockpit. I am based in Waldorf headquarters, and today with me, there's my colleague, Claudia. Hello, thanks, and a warm welcome also from my side. My name is Claudia Gem. I'm working together with um, Sibylle in the same team in the product management. And in our session today, we want to give you some insight uh, about the SAP s migration cockpit, about the functions and future features, and for sure, what's new with 2020. And with this, I hand over back to Sibylle. Thanks, Claudia. So first of all, um, I would like to give a brief insight in what you can expect from our presentation today. We start with an introduction. I will shortly talk about different options for moving on to SAP s but not to go into too much details. Uh, there are separate sessions where you can go and have deep dive information. Then we have a closer look at the SAP s migration cockpit itself. You will get an overview on functions and features, get to know the different migration approaches where we have currently two, see a demo and then gain insights on available migration objects. We will also point you to further information resources where you can access material for all our tool. And in the key takeaways, Claudia will summarize what we were talking about. Okay, now, so we go for um, the different my transition scenarios to move to SAP s hana You see at the top, you have uh, the possibility to reuse your old system. So you have to distinguish between reusing and re-engineering. Reusing means you take your old SAP system with the business uh, processes that are existing you do a system conversion and then you move on to the SAP s hana system. So everything stays the same as it is. Business processes stay the same, all historical data stays in the system. On the other hand, you have the re-engineering possibility, meaning you start from scratch with a brand new SAP s hana system. There are a huge differentiation between highly standardized um, processes and customer tailored processes. So in case you decide to go for a fresh system, then we have a new implementation scenario where we do a business process re-engineering. You can um, re-engineer what you what you think about, what you want to use for SAP s hana for the new business possibilities. Um, you change your business processes and maybe also your uh, customizing. So you start from scratch. And in between, we see the selective data transition. This is a combination of both uh, transition scenarios where you go for um, specific customer needs, uh, meaning that you take some of the old data and move on to s hana so an example would be that you want to merge different systems or you want to have uh, historical data of uh, some functionality. This selective data transition is always a customer uh, project-based approach. There is no tool available. And uh, what we are now focusing is the SAP s hana migration cockpit, which is used in the scenario for a new implementation. So with this in mind, the migration cockpit is a standard SAP tool that helps you to migrate the legacy data to an SAP s hana system. Doesn't matter if it is on premise or a cloud solution. Um, it comes with the licenses, so there's no separate installation needed. It's everything out of the box. It helps you to migrate your legacy data to the S4 system, and this is the tool we provide from SAP side to help you to move on in a new implementation project for SAP s hana So now when we have a closer look at the tool itself, this SAP s hana migration cockpit, as I already mentioned, it comes out of the box. It is available for SAP s hana and SAP s hana Cloud, and it's included in the licenses. You do not have to install anything separately. Um, 
To move on to S4HANA Cloud, the migration cockpit is the only tool that is available to migrate your legacy data. What comes also with the migration cockpit are pre-configured migration objects. So for example, we have a product or customers or material master or vendors. These are pre-configured and pre-delivered by SAP. You do not need any developer skills as uh, programs for migration are gener um, generated automatically. You will find a step-by-step -step guidance, which leads you the, through the whole migration process. You have also rules integrated in the migration objects, which define the mapping. So the old value to the new value is uh, predefined here, which you can then um, adapt to your needs. And we have also a cross object value mapping, meaning if you have one object map, then this mapping is used in other object also. So we take care that the mapping itself is consistent over the whole project. And if you think then, okay, what happens if I have some customer specific needs, I need to adapt these migration objects. We also have a possibility here. This is the inherent migration object modeler. It's a design tool, which you can use to adapt existing migration objects or to create new migration objects according to your needs. This migration object modeler is only available for SAP S4 HANA. The migration process itself, we will have here uh, a short um, process flow. It, the migration process itself, it, it's a key task, which is important in all uh, new implementation projects. Sometimes we see that people might forget some of um, those tasks and comes very late in the project. So it's really a task that you should consider from beginning on. For the process itself, you select the migration objects. You, so you define, okay, I want to take my uh, products. I want to take my customers. I want to take uh, my GL accounts, for example. So I select my migration objects. Um, then you prepare the data that wants to be taken to the S4 system. This can done via different uh, approaches. We see uh, in the following uh, presentation, in, in this presentation now. Then if you have the, the data uh, prepared, these data has to be mapped and transformed. So the old value has to be mapped to the new value. Um, you may have to adapt with the migration object modeler your requirements. Then you proceed with a simulation. So meaning the data is taken and it's simulated what would happen if this is passed over to the S4 system. Finally, we go for the migration itself. So the data is then posted to the SAP S4 HANA or SAP S4 HANA cloud system. So as I already mentioned, there are different migration approaches. So we started in 1511 with the first one you see here, transfer data using files. That means you can download XML template files, populate them with your business data and upload this to the migration cockpit and the migration cockpit then proceeds with the posting to the S4 system. In 1709, we had introduced the transfer data using staging tables meaning that we have uh, staging tables on the database, which you can populate. The big advantage here was that you can uh, go for bigger amount of data. Um, and in 1909, finally, we introduced the direct transfer, which is the third migration approach you see here, transfer data directly from SAP system, where we access the system, the legacy system, the SAP system via RFC connection. Um, we can deliver here, pre-deliver the extraction part. So you don't have to care how to populate uh, staging tables or XML template files. So this is done automatically. Um, it, it's a big advantage, but this is uh, um, available for the on-prem version only. And you see in the direct transfer also, there are different migration scenarios available. So these are, for example, for AFS or EWM, 
And this is a predefined set of a migration uh, object for a specific use case. So this comes also out of the box. So this was the current status. What we have now with the 2020 or Cloud Edition 2008 is that we combined the first two migration approaches into one. So we have the migrate data using staging tables, which is now in an SAP Fiori UI. And we have the second approach, which is migrate data directly from SAP system. And what we will do now is we will have a close, closer look how, um, why we introduced this uh, combined approach. So first of all, the direct transfer, this is already was delivered uh, with the Fiori app. Now the staging is also with the Fiori app. So we have one common UI technology, one front end technology. Uh, it's easier now to populate the staging tables. We have the possibility of instant-based status tracking and messages. So that means every data record is easier to recognize and to follow up. We have an improved capability of uh, up and downloading mapping values, which is really a big advantage if you start your project very early and you want to go for mappings. Um, why did we do this? It's now all the data is stored in the staging tables. You can use either the local SAP database, uh, which is in the S4 system, or you can use an ex uh, external SAP HANA database connection. And still other tools can be used to populate the staging tables. So the big advantages is that we have a state-of-the-art user experience with our new UI. We have faster UI response time, and we can now process multiple objects at once. So this is easier navigation and processing. And we have um, a progress tracing. It's a kind of monitor which is available for the whole uh, migration ste steps you do in the project. So if we go now to the uh, first migration approach with using staging tables, you will see here on the left-hand side, this is our Fiori app, which is now available for the direct transfer and the staging tables. You see in the middle the process and content where you see some screenshots on how the Fiori app looks like when you create a project and when you proceed, you see uh, there's a drop down box which helps you for the different steps you do in a migration project. So this is in the middle the, the UI. And on the right hand side, you see the data load. It's still API based. So that means we take the data and uh, put it through the API and post the data to the S4 system. So the big advantage here is that all logical um, dependencies are checked. So the data is then consistent in the S4 system. And you see this migration approach is available for SAP S4 HANA Cloud and SAP S4 HANA. In the meantime, we have a lot of migration objects pre-delivered. For Cloud, this is more than 145. And for on-prem, more than 115. We are all, with every release, we are going to enhance the objects. So this is the current status. If we have now a closer look how the, the first entry point is in when you access the uh, Fiori app, you see here when opening the Fiori app, you have the possibility to choose either to go for the migrate data using staging tables or migrate data directly from SAP system. So this is the first distinction. And from that on, if you proceed with the staging, um, then you will be uh, guided through the whole project. For all who are already familiar with the migration cockpit, we want to stress here again, what is new with the new release. So first of all, we have this one harmonized user experience with a Fiori UI for all the approaches now. Then we have the possibility to process multiple objects at once. You can select them and go for simulation or migration with one click. Then we have an instance-based instance status tracking and messaging, which also makes it easier to look for errors. 
Uh, we have a monitor which uh, keeps you up to date what is going on in the system during stimulation and migration. We have the possibilities now to up and download the uh, um, mapping values. There are templates provided and you can also up and download the existing mapping values. And uh, what is important to know is that projects that you have already created via WebDynPro, so meaning the old LTMC transaction, they cannot be converted to the new Fury app with all this new functionality. They are still available and read only from 2105 onwards in cloud and 2021 in on-premise there will be no possibility to create project with this old web dune pro based solution it's only then for the fury ui so and now with this i told you something about the staging approach and it's now a good time to get an idea how this looks like we have prepared a demo this will show you how to create a project how to select migration objects we proceed then with mapping tasks followed by a simulation and finally, the process is ended with a migration. So here we go. In this video, we want to show you how you can use the SAP s hana Migration Cockpit to migrate your data using staging tables. Open the Migrate Your Data app. Under Migration Projects, you can view all the migration projects that already exist in the system. Let's create a new migration project. Under General Data, you can specify a name for your project. Decide whether you want to create the staging tables in the internal schema of the SAP s hana Cloud System or in a remote SAP HANA database schema. Under Migration Objects, you can find a list of all pre-delivered migration objects. For more information about a migration object, see the documentation. Select the objects that are relevant for your project. Choose Review to review your project settings. As we do not want any predecessor objects, we choose Do not add. Choose Create Project. In the overview, the newly created project appears. Choose it. Under Migration Project, you can trigger the steps that are required to transfer the data to the target SAP s hana cloud system. The system creates the staging tables for the migration object. We can see that the system has created one staging table for this migration object. Let's start by populating the staging table with data. You can fill the staging tables by using template files or your preferred tools. In this example, we're using a template file. Template files are provided by SAP for every pre-delivered migration object. In the template file, the introduction sheet provides detailed information about how to enter the expected data. Once you've filled the template file, upload it. We can see that three migration object instances have been successfully transferred to the staging tables. Before staging tables can be used to transfer data to SAP s hana Cloud, they need to be prepared. In the next step, you need to process any open mapping tasks before you can proceed. In the Mapping Tasks column, you can view the number of open tasks. Choose Mapping Tasks. In this example, there are nine open mapping tasks with the status to be confirmed. Choose one open task. Enter the relevant target values. Then you can set the status of the task to confirmed. Once all mapping tasks are confirmed, they're done. You can proceed with the simulation. Choose Simulate to simulate the transfer of the migration object instances to the target SAP s hana Cloud system. The simulation was successful. You can now migrate your data. The green progress bar indicates that the instances have been migrated successfully. After watching the video, you have now some experience on how the migration cockpit is working by using the staging tables.
Now I want to explain our second approach that I transfer in more detail. You see the approach migrate data directly from SAP system looks very similar to our staging approach. We have the guided uh, processing within a migration project. We have the pre-configured content with our migration objects. And there's also the API logic to load the data in the S4 HANA task system in place. The major difference is to be found in the data provisioning. Now the user is not any more responsible to provide the relevant data, but the migration cockpit is taken care of. The user needs only to decide for which organizational entity the selection should be executed. For example, you select uh, one or several company codes or even all of them to collect the data from the ERP source system. The cockpit is currently able to select data not only from an SAP ERP system, but also from an SAP AFS system, EWM, or even a CRM system. Uh, the, the, we, we call these all steps, we um, uh, call them scenarios. And these scenarios have uh, dedicated selection criteria. So, for example, for AFS and ERP, we are using the company codes selection criteria. For EWN, we use the warehouse number. And for CRM, the sales organization is uh, relevant here. The direct transfer comes with more than 140 predefined migration objects. For sure, the scope will be extended with the upcoming releases. One important point uh, is that the direct transfer is only available for the on-premise world, only for SAP, as for HANA, as for as target system. In the video, you already learned how to create a migration project. The direct transfer works almost similar. Let's check what's special here. For sure, we need uh, to know which scenario is the right, one, the right one for your project to access the source system. The second point is to take an, an RFC connection, which is um, a to be defined upfront from your basis team. Yeah. With this RC connection, you go to your source system. And to be able to transport a migration objects between two systems, you need a development package. This is relevant if you uh, start in a test environment, in a test landscape, and um, Afterwards, you want to move your project, which is proven by tests, into your productive landscape for a productive migration. And you see here, there's a second step mentioned. In this second step, you have to select your organizational entity. For ERP, we have the company code, as already mentioned. Here, you have to choose which of your company's codes should be handled within this migration project. Yeah, you can choose one or more, or, or this is up to you. Maybe one point is how many data you want to handle. So what's new with the diet transfer in the current release 2020? As just mentioned, it, we are able now to transfer projects between systems. This is uh, to avoid errors between testing and productive uh, uh, activities. Uh, this is very comfortable to say, okay, I want to transport these uh, projects between systems. Then we have now the possibility to reselect the data. If we run the selection, we are now able to rerun the complete selection or even only run to get a data if maybe some data has changed or added in the source system that we are able to 
add them in the current project and the current selection. This is the functionality which was enhanced with the SAP Fiori Array. Another point is a mass processing. We are now able to work on the migration objects instance view. So this means you are able now to filter a subset of your selected instances and execute them. So you are able to test some critical items before and you can simulate only one, two, three of your selected data and already migrate them and to see if the process is working as you expect this. Then uh, we have the new monitoring functionality. Here we have a more comfortable tool to check what the status of running processes, completed processes for the different phases for the simulation for the migration. We have all this information on one screen for the several objects you have included in your project. Sibylla already told you uh, this. Uh, we have now the mapping download and upload functionality in the SAP Fiori environment. You can download the templates for the mappings for the single objects. So you can distribute this in your business uh, units to populate, or even you can download the populated uh, mapping values to upload them in another system. So this is also now possible. And the next step is to get an overview about uh, the different migration approaches on, on one slide. Yeah? Here we have our model delivered until 1909. You know, there we have had three uh, approaches, migration approaches in place. Uh, as maybe somebody is working still on 99, this is uh, still interesting for you. We have the approaches uh, for file and staging, which are uh, the only possibility to print data in the SAP S4 HANA cloud. And we have, uh, in addition, the uh, direct transfer, which is available for the S4 HANA on-premise environment. Yeah. We have the possibility to um, load data also from non-SAP system. If you're working with the files and staging approaches, you are independent on from which legacy system you are start. Yeah. For these two approaches, the user is responsible for the data provisioning, while for the di di data <laughs> transfer, the uh, migration cockpit is taking care about this. And now with 2020, we have combined these two approaches. Uh, the staging table takes care uh, about uh, also the non-SAP systems as already known, and is also besides the on-premise world also uh, responsible to bring data in the cloud, which is uh, valid for all the approaches, even on 1909 or 2020, is the area of data cleansing. The migration cockpit is not a dedicated tool to clean data. Now, you have some functionalities within the cockpit. For in the direct transfer, you have the possibility to exclude data. You have the possibility in the migration object model to um, influence the selection. Um, for in the um, template upload, you can um, avoid duplicate entries, but in general, uh, you should check your data quality before you're starting a migration uh, object, a project in the migration cockpit. If you start your migration project, your migration program, or even you want to know for sure uh, if the scope you have to migrate is already covered with the migration objects. And for this, we um, have provided in the SAP Help portal an overview about all the migration objects which are available. And this um, separated for sure for cloud deployment or for um, on-premise deployment. We have this separated in the 
different releases so that you can check for your special release you're working with which migration objects are available. For these objects, we have a detailed documentation available where you can see what's in and maybe out of scope, what is not covered, what is covered with the object, which authorization are needed. And you can filter these objects by your dedicated approach you want to use. And at the end, you can also download a list of migration to distribute this internally within your project team. So this is a good point to check the, um, the possibilities before your S4 system is already in place. Let me give you some more further information uh, which helps you to start with the cockpit. We have also in the SAP help portal um, landing pages provided for SAP S4 HANA and also for SAP S4 HANA Cloud in the area of data migration, where you can find all the available information. You have in the getting started area, we have provided all the slides, we have provided videos, we have provided a starter blog where you can check the first steps on tips and tricks, how to start with the cockpit. In the news area, you can find all the related um, release updates regarding the functionality and content for sure. In this SAP community, you are able to exchange with other users working with the cockpit and ask a question or give also tips and tricks. This is very helpful. It's, uh, we keep this up to date and uh, we really recommend to use these landing pages uh, to catch uh, deeper insights. And uh, with 2020, very new and for sure very helpful is the training and education area where we have uh, provided a lot of materials, even these are only overview materials, but also uh, deep dive sessions for the single approaches and uh, also for the migration object modelers, which we provide for the on-premise environment, where you can um, work with your own objects, enhance uh, standard objects, there you can see how to do this and um, what's possible and what's, uh, what's been for you. We have the video library here, where you can check um, um, or to get a better overview if you start. And uh, you can enjoy our open SAP course where you uh, get an overview and all insight about the available functionalities and how it's working, examples, um, videos on uh, based on 90 online, where you can get uh, more insights and deeper insights. So often, uh, uh, the users want to play around with the cockpit, but do not have a proper system landscape, especially for the um, for the direct transfer, you need a source and a target system. Here we can provide a fully activated appliance also for external usage, where you can um, uh, build up an instance for yourself. We have included demo scripts for all approaches, also for the migra migration object modelers, where you can uh, run these demo scripts and see how the cockpit is working. Uh, you have a fully um, uh, applied landscape where you can um, work with by your own. And it um, might be very helpful if you have no test um, landscape available. Okay, uh, nearly close to the end. I want to give you some key takeaways about the migration cockpit. Um, important is that it's included in the SAP S4 HANA and in the SAP S4 HANA cloud, cloud license and chip limit. So if your uh, system is up and running, you the, the migration cockpit is ready to start. So it's uh, made for migrating data from SAP and non-SAP source systems into the both uh, deployment um, possibilities. For cloud, it's the only one. We provide a guided procedure that takes the user through the complete migration process. Yeah, you have the 
uh, from the load over the mapping, the transformation, the simulation, and the migration, the real load into the system, the user will be guided. So it's easy and safe to use. And if you work with the standard content, you need no program, um, programmer knowledge, developing knowledge uh, to um, work with the cockpit. But on the other hand, it is uh, flexible to integration of customer business data, including the data transformation, meaning we have our migration object model in place for the on-premise environment where you can create your own migration objects, you can enhance existing objects that gives you a uh, maximum and flexibility to bring in your own requirements if needed. We have the two approaches available, migrate data using staging tables, which can be used for cloud and for uh, on-premise. And we have the migrate data directly from SAP system, which is only available for S4HANA. Our predefined migration content um, um, provides you an automatic mapping between the source structure and the target structure in the S4 environment. And the necessary migration programs will be generated automatically in the background. Also, if you make adjustments with the migration object model. And this is uh, the last point here, as already mentioned, you are free to create your own objects or to enhance standard object if it's necessary. Here, once again, the complete process, starting with checking your scope, what I want to migrate, then um, choose a valid approach, provision data, run the data selection or the data provisioning, then transform your data, simulate the process, and then run the actual load into the target systems. Okay, in a nutshell, we have here our uh, most important links uh, to get an easy start with the migration cockpit. And on the end, this is the end of the, uh, of the presentation, but not of your learning experience. Please check the Learning Hub platform to get more insights and more live session, which we provide. And now, thanks for attending the session. If you want to contact us, you find here our uh, contact information. Thank you very much. Thank you.